This lesson is for section 13.1, the first section in a chapter all about finding the roots of polynomial equations. What we're going to be doing first today is the division of polynomials. So we're going to practice a skill that you already have from previous years that's long division. Okay. We're also going to use synthetic division, which I think you guys will like. You probably liked it last year too. It's a lot quicker than long division. Um, and then we're also going to do something brand new for you, and that's to write an expression, um, or factor, I should say, x to the n minus a to the n, and be able to write that as the product of two factors. So we're going to take an expression that's in this form and, and figure out how to factor that. So let's start with some vocabulary because I'm going to use specific words throughout this lesson. I want to make sure that you understand that. Um, when you look at the number 9 divided by 2, we usually see it written like this, 9 divided by 2, but we can rewrite that as 4 plus 1 half. Um, so this is considered the quotient, 4, uh, and this would be my remainder, 1. So when I see certain words like quotient or remainder, I think that's pretty easy for you guys to to use because you've probably seen that plenty of times. However, um, this new word, not, not necessarily new, but you probably haven't really looked at this word in quite a while, the dividend and the divisor um, are the terms that we're going to see a lot. So the dividend is, is essentially the number that is being divided. So in this case, the dividend would have been 9. Okay, So 9 is my dividend here, and you can see it's just rewritten here. Um, the divisor is the number you're dividing by. So that 2 is my divisor. 4, of course, is the quotient here, and um, 2 times 4 is, is 8, so I would subtract 8 to get that remainder here of 1. So I can rewrite this um, in this form here, or I can rewrite it in this form, which is what your book likes to, to show, um, and, and it's a little bit fancier way of rewriting um, the division of basically polynomials as well. So your dividend can be rewritten as the product of your divisor and quotient plus your remainder. Okay. So um, basically what you're going to be seeing, though, is the dividend in the numerator and the divisor in the denominator. That's essentially what you know, those vocabulary terms mean. So let's get to using long division. This first problem is kind of a monster problem. It looks pretty basic, but um, I just wanted to go over this to practice this with you. And you're going to do number two on your own. The reason why I picked this first problem is because you have to use placeholders here um, in order to use long division. So when we long divide, we take our divisor, we place that on the outside. Our dividend goes on the inside here, so x to the fifth. And then I have to remember that I have to have descending terms, and I have to have placeholders for everything that's in between these two terms. So I have fifth power here, and I need to go down in descending order, so I have 0x to the fourth, 0x to the third, 0x squared, 0x, and then finally that plus 32. So everything here is technically a placeholder, but it is essential in, in order to uh, long divide here. All right, when you long divide, what you're looking to do is just look at your first term here and figure out how many times does that first term fit into x to the fifth. So you look at the first term always and look at the term here that you're focusing on, which would be, in this case, x to the fifth. So it's always the first term. So x to the fifth is divided by x, x to the fourth times. So it fits in x to the fourth times. Now, I take this number, or this term, x to the fourth, and I distribute it to x minus 3. So I, I find the product of that, and I'm going to write it here underneath. So x to the fourth times x minus 3 is x to the fifth minus 3x to the fourth. Now what I do is I put this in parentheses just so I don't mess up on any of my signs, and I'm going to subtract that entire expression just like here. It relates back to, you know, multiplying here. How many times does 2 fit into 9? Well, it fits in evenly 4 times. We write 2 times 4, which is 8, right underneath. And then we subtract that to find what our remainder is. It's exactly the same process here. I find how many times x fits into x to the 5th. It fits in x to the 4th times. Then I find the product here. I multiply that back out. I get this expression. And then I'm going to subtract that. So these x to the 5th ends up canceling. 0x to the 4th minus negative 3x to the 4th is a positive 3x to the 4th. And then I start this process all over again. So I bring down and drop down that 0x cubed. Um, and then I'm going to find x minus 3. I look at this and I look at the linear term here and only this term here. And I ask myself, how many times does x fit into 3x to the 4th? This time it fits in 3x to the 3rd times. So now I write that as, again, the product. So now I'm finding the product of 3x to the third times this number here, or this expression here, and I get 3x to the fourth uh, minus 9x to the third. Again, I subtract that amount, 
to figure out what the remainder is. So I have 0x cubed minus a negative 9x cubed to give me positive 9x cubed. I'm probably going to run out of room here at some point, so I'm going to try to write a little bit smaller, but essentially I just keep going from here. So I bring down again that 0x x squared, and then I ask myself how many times does x fit into 9x cubed? It fits in 9x squared times, and I again multiply that out, so I have 9x squared minus uh, 27x squared. I'm going to subtract that term. The first terms will cancel, leaving me with a positive 27x squared. Drop down that 0x now. And ask yourself how many times does x fit into 27x squared? If it's in 27x times, I distribute that back, you know, find the product. So I have 27x squared minus 81x. And now I'm going to subtract that whole term here. These are going to cancel, and I'm left with 81x. How many times does 81x, um, or I'm sorry, x fit into 81x? It fits in 81 times, so I have a positive 81. Distribute that out, so 81 times x minus 3 is 81x. Oh, sorry, I forgot to drop down the 32. So it really doesn't matter when you do it, as long as you realize you have to drop down that term. So I have that, uh, 32 here. Okay, so 81x times uh, 3 times 80, negative 3 times 81 is negative 243. And then I'm remembering that I have to subtract that whole term. So I'm going to take negative 32 plus 243, which gives me 211. And my final step, so that I know that I'm finished, is the fact that x no longer fits inside of 211. It cannot fit inside, so now my remainder here is 211. Now what you guys are used to doing is writing this as x to the fourth plus 3x cubed plus 9x squared, and you know writing out this entire term, so blah, 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 blah plus your remainder over your divisor, so 211 over x minus 3. That's typically what you've done in the past. Now, in this problem, um, it's just asking you a fancy way of finding q of x. This is your quotient. This is q of x. This is the polynomial here that I didn't finish writing, but that's the whole polynomial. That's this guy here. That's the quotient. And your remainder, r of x, was here. Okay. It's actually just 2, 2 11. Now, um, I don't need you to rewrite it in this form, but you should be able to follow that form. Take your original dividend, you know, the x to the fifth minus 32, set that equal to your divisor, x minus 3 times that whole expression, the q of x, and then plus r of x. You should be able to do that, but I'm not going to ask you to do that. But in your textbook, if it does, that's what you're asked to do, okay? All right, I'd like you to try number two on your own. Um, make sure that you set up a placeholder here. Your divisor on the outside also should have a placeholder here, okay? It definitely helps to have that placeholder. If you don't, um, you can make some little mathematical computational errors. So make sure you have a divisor, or I'm sorry, a placeholder here in your divisor. And then from there on out, it's pretty straightforward because here... Um, they already go in descending order. You don't even need placeholders there. So check that answer with the key, um, and then we're going to move on. Next up, we have synthetic division, which I think you guys are going to really like. If you don't remember it from last year, it's a very quick process. But unfortunately, this only works when you have a divisor of the form x minus r. So if you look at both of these problems here, um, the first one is in the form x minus r, but this one is not. So in this case, we're going to have to do something slightly different. So it only works for linear factors. So we want to make sure it's a linear factor, and we also have to have it with a lead coefficient of 1. So since this one is not, we're going to do something slightly different. When you set up your synthetic division, you're going to create a little box. Some of you might have used a different box, whatever. I just like this one here. Um, and you're going to place r, this value here, on the outside of that box. Notice I'm using a positive 1, because if it's in the form x minus r, then r is equal to 1. So <clears throat> I now place the divide, uh, dividend um, in the top row here. And again, I'm going to use a placeholder. But all I want to do is place the coefficients. Now, this is x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 1. Or I'm sorry, minus 1. Whoops. So these are the coefficients that I'm going to place in front of 1, a 0, a 0, and a negative 1 here. And I just go in order. Um, make sure that you also have placeholders here. It's really important, otherwise your synthetic division will not work if you don't have your placeholders. 
Um, and that's how I start it. Now, the basic gist of this, this is a review, you're going to drop the first number here down. So I drop that first term down here. I don't know why it just disappeared, but it's a 1. And now I'm going to multiply 1 times 1. That number, 1 times 1, goes here. So the product goes inside the box. So every time you find a product, you're going to place it on the inside of your box. Um, and then when you find the sum here, 0 plus 1, everything that's inside the box you're going to add. So I get a 1 here. And then I repeat the process. I now take this number, multiply it by this number here. So 1 times 1, the product goes inside. I place the 1 there. And then I add these numbers here again. I get a 1. And then I do the same thing. 1 times 1 gives me 1. And if I add here, I get 0. This is telling me I do not have a remainder. The remainder is just 0. So this would factor x minus 1 must be a factor of x cubed minus 1. And you should know that it is, because you know if you did the difference of cubes, you would see that it is a factor there. But anyhow, we interpret this here um, as a polynomial. Now the polynomial here, these are the coefficients in front of your term. So this is 1x squared plus 1x plus 1 plus 0 over x minus 1. Of course, we don't need to write that in, but this is what that polynomial looks like um, that's, that's left over after you divide out the x minus 1. So if you notice, I started with an x squared term. It is 1 less than the degree here. Always this um, final um, answer, the way you're going to interpret it, always take the, the first term will always start with one degree less, because if you think about it, you're taking x cubed and you're taking out an x value, right? One of the x's, you're factoring it out, so it should leave you with an x squared here, okay? All right, let's do problem four. Okay, in problem four, I have a denominator here. The divisor is not in the form x minus r, all right? Now, the synthetic division only works when it's in the form x minus r, so I need to change this divisor so that it has a lead coefficient here of 1. So in order to change that coefficient to a 1x, what I would essentially have to do here is divide that denominator by 2 so that I have x minus 3 halves. Now because I'm dividing the divisor by 2, I also want to divide the numerator here by 2. So when I stick this into synthetic division, I'm still going to use 3 halves on the outside here. But now my coefficients are going to all change by a factor of 2. I'm going to divide out 2. So I have 1, negative 7 halves, and 4. Okay, so I just take each one of these and divide those by 2. Now when I do synthetic division, I do it the same exact way. I'm going to drop this 1 down, multiply 1 times 3 halves, add negative 7 halves plus 3 halves to give me negative 4 halves. In other words, negative 2. Multiply negative 2 times 3 halves to give me negative 3. And I'm left with, this time, 4 plus negative 1 gives me 1. This is my remainder. Okay, over on the other problem, we had a remainder of 0. Here I have a remainder of 1. When I rewrite my answer, remember this has a degree 1 less than my uh, original numerator, so this is just going to be 1x, okay, or just x. So x minus 2 plus 1 over, instead of writing this new um, divisor, I'm going to keep the original divisor 2x minus 3. So this is my answer for this problem, number 4. When I divide uh, 2x squared minus 7x plus 8 divided by 2x minus 3, I can still use synthetic division. I just need to make sure that I change the uh, linear factor as well as changing um, the original polynomial as well. Next up is something brand new for you guys, and that's um, using synthetic division here to factor something in the form x to the n minus a to the n. So <clears throat> something like x cubed minus uh, 27 because I could rewrite that as 3 cubed, where I have the same exponent for each term. Okay, So we're going to factor something like that um, when it's a higher degree than a cube or a squared, because we already know how to factor stuff like that. So our first example here, x to the fifth minus a to the fifth. We're going to divide it by x minus a. We're going to use synthetic division to try to figure out how we can write the factorization of, of this. So I start with a here on the outside. And I'm going to now write in descending order, I have x to the fifth minus 0x to the fourth, or, or plus, I should say, plus 0x to the third plus 0x squared plus 0x minus a to the fifth. This is just my constant term, right? a to the fifth is just a constant. So I'm going to use placeholders here for everything, but 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, negative a to the fifth. Okay, 
So we now have, drop down that one, one times a is a, zero plus a is a, a times a is a squared, zero plus a squared is a squared, a squared times a is a cubed, zero plus a cubed is a cubed, Man, this would take forever if you were doing long division. Um, a times a cubed is a to the fourth. Zero plus a to the fourth is a to the fourth. Then finally, a times a to the fourth is a to the fifth. Adding these together, I get zero. So I have a remainder of zero. So when I divide x to the fifth minus um, a to the fifth by x minus a, I end up with, remember this is going to be x to the fourth plus ax to the third plus a squared x squared plus a cubed x plus a to the fourth. So if you look at your terms here, notice that your first term is just one minus this first one, okay, um, with your lead coefficient just being one. Now your second term is now descending, obviously, but now I'm multiplying that by a factor of just a, this value here. Then your next term, this goes down one, this becomes a squared. So it goes up by a factor of a. And then again, it increases to a cubed. This, this term goes down one, and then finally, when I get x to the zero, I don't need to write in x to the zero, I just forget about that, and I have a to the fourth term. Okay, so all I wanna do is reiterate the fact that this is just a pattern, okay? So something like x to the fifth minus a to the fifth I see that these are both the same power here. I can rewrite that as the product of x minus a multiplied by this entire expression, this polynomial here that we just found, okay? And this polynomial follows a very easy pattern where we take the first term here, it's just gonna be one degree less than our first term. And then we uh, keep going in descending order, so it becomes x cubed, x squared, x, and um, finally x to the zero. And then for the coefficient in front of that term, it starts off being a 1, and then we use a factor of a. Then we increase that, so then we have now a squared, then a cubed, then a to the fourth, where a is just the second term here. a is just that second value. So let's look at an actual problem so this makes a little bit more sense, because I was just using variables there. So let's do a problem where we're factoring something like x to the fourth minus 256. So the first thing I want to do is rewrite this as x to the fourth minus four to the fourth, so I have the same exponents, okay? The difference of uh, basically two terms with the same exponent. Now, um, I'm going to use the pattern. I know that if I take x minus four, I can multiply that by some other polynomial here, and that's what we're gonna work on to figure out what this, the, the, we're gonna use the pattern that we used above to find the rest of this polynomial. So let's work on that. We know the first term should be this term descending, so x to the third power. Okay, it's gonna have a lead coefficient here of one because you're just gonna use a coefficient of one. Now the second term is gonna go in descending order, so that's x cubed minus one to give me x squared. And then I have a factor of the value, the a value, I guess you could say, which in this case is four. So that's gonna be plus four x squared. Now your next term is going to be um, a factor of, now increase this by a factor of 4 again, so you have 16x, and this is going to decrease by 1, so we have plus 16x, and then finally, when I finish this off as x to the 0 power, which I don't really need to write in there because it's just equal to 1, that last term should be 4 to the 3rd power, this time, to give me a positive 64. So if we look at our pattern, we just have 1, and then that descending term, so whatever your original term was, minus 1, plus um, your a value times x to the, again, now it's gonna, this is going to go down a second time, so 4 minus 2, and then the next term was a squared times x to the 4 minus 3, and then finally um, a cubed times x to the 4 minus 4, okay? So it's just following this pattern every single time. So this is how you would find and rewrite this as the product of two um, factors. All right, so just this is what, when it asks you to find the product of two factors, that's essentially what we're asking you to do. All right, um, come to class tomorrow ready to ask any questions because I know this is, the new stuff is a little bit trickier, um, but uh, hopefully you're catching on to that pattern. Nice job, I will see you manana.